Here's the Mobile Burn web page, uh, our mobile version of it. You can see we've got a uh, multi-touch su zooming support as well as the on-screen controls. As you scroll up, the URL bar disappears. But uh, let's go to the full website just so you can see what a mo more complex website looks like. And thanks to the Wi-Fi connection and the one gigahertz processor, things load up pretty quickly. All the ads are in place, everything is formatted exactly as it is on a PC-based browser. Let's try a double tap for Zoom. See, even while it's still loading some stuff, uh, everything's working very, very well. This is a really good browsing experience right here. We're going to jump into this story on the Vibrant's brother, the Captivate for AT&T, to see how it handles embedded flash. We've got a video down at the bottom. And it's going to pull it up in the built-in YouTube client. So we'll take a look at that quickly. Hey everyone, this is Todd Hazelton with MobileBurn.com, and today we're checking out the text popping up. Do the a video. Really good quality. This is with the 720p. It's worth pointing out that when you double tap to intelligently zoom, text rewraps so as you can read it. You'll notice that I can still read everything, and it wrapped it around the ad. Um, really works quite well. I'm going to show you that you can pull up multiple windows here. So I'm not going to be able to get to the T-Mobile page here because we're over Wi-Fi connection right now. I'll pull up YouTube. Uh, also worth noting though that you can of course use a full screen landscape QWERTY keyboard too. We'll bring, bring up the YouTube page, and this is the new HTML5 version that YouTube just rolled out. I'm going to switch over to the non-mobile version so you can see what it looks like. Everything looks quite nice. It's a really good browsing experience. And of course, there's a RSS feed there. So you can add the RSS feed to your reader. And of course, just tap here to save it as a bookmark. We have a nice visual bookmark system. Let's take a look at some of the Samsung widgets that are included. number of different things here. Let's pull up the weather clock. And I'm going to say Trenton. That's the nearest. And you can see how inaccurately I was swiping through there and it still worked quite well on on the um, swipe system. Really nice text input. Once you, a um, little bit of a learning curve to it, but once you make that commitment to it, it's well, well worth it. Let's see if we can find another empty panel here and install something else. Daily briefing. Oops, I hit the wrong one. Get rid of that. Long press it drag it down, go back and I'll put daily briefing in. Uh, daily briefing has been seen on a number of other Samsung devices, uh, feature friends and smartphones alike. Uh, you can get um, stock quotes, uh, AP news and weather all in a nice nice uh, little application that also pulls in information from your calendar. This of course being the calendar. This is mixing my Exchange stuff along with some test Google stuff. So you can see my uh, wife was getting an estimate on some damage on our car. And then there's also sample events, a multi day event here, and another recurring event here coming from Gmail. If we jump out of daily briefing and into the full calendar, though, you can see what uh, you have a lot more functionality from here. Again, you see the same events because it's from the same calendar information week view, day view, and agenda. You can also configure which accounts you want to show up in the calendar, and I just turned off my exchange data, so you can see it's no longer that Audi appointment that was listed for today before. I've loaded the camera here so you can see how it works. It's a 5 megapixel camera. No shutter button, which I find a little bit annoying, so you tap on the screen to tell it where to focus and then press the on-screen shutter button right here to take your photo. Fair number of settings. See five megapixel here. 
a lot of different options. You can tap on this tab to make the settings and shortcuts appear or disappear. Let's go into camcorder mode here and make sure we're recording at the appropriate resolution. I'm going to go to 720p HD video. Let's start it up. Now we're recording. Move around a bit and I'll hit the stop button. And let's watch it. Now we're recording. Move around a bit. And I'll hit the stop button. So here's the gallery application. Uh, the movies and photos over here, the ones I've shot with this, these are coming from a Facebook account, uh, which is pretty cool. So there's the movie we just saw. Let's instead pull up some of the photos. You can see it works. The orientation sensor works for photos for you know, vertical and landscape mode. One of the things I want to show you is that the importance of the focusing system. You can see in this picture right here, the buckyballs are in focus whereas the car is not. It's because I tapped on the buckyballs when I was taking the photo. In this one, however, the buckyballs are out of focus because I tapped on the car, which is now in focus. So while I still prefer a hardware shutter button, there are definitely situations where um, this comes in handy, this touch to focus. And there are a lot of other features in the camera, like smile detection and things like that. And you also have multi-touch zooming controls, just like you do in the browser and other places. Here's the email client that comes on the Vibrant. It has a definite TouchWiz 3.0 look and feel to it. You can see very pretty. Uh, you can pull up messages just by tapping on them. HTML email. And this is an exchange account and I'm going to show you that you can easily switch to different folders just by scrolling across the top. While the prior email application handles all different types of accounts, uh, IMAP, POP, uh, Exchange, the Gmail client works separately from all the rest. And you can see this is the inbox here. I'm going to long press on this message from Ryan and mark it unread just so you can see the kind of things we have access to. You can star message. You can tap on it. And of course it has full HTML support as well. Support for multiple Gmail accounts here. You can switch to them just by hitting the menu button and hitting the accounts button. This is the music player on the Vibrant. Does not appear to have uh, MTP compatibility, or at least not full compatibility. I'm not getting uh, album art in general when I'm syncing. Do get a few songs that uh, sync with album art. I imagine it depends on where the source was purchased. Um, this was bought on Amazon MP3 at one point in time, so that's probably why it works that way. You go into landscape mode, we should have a different view. Of course, the music plays in the background. You can get back to it and see what's going on through the notification bar. attempt to peel off the back of the device. You can see where the SIM card goes. Uh, here's the micro SD card slot, 2 gig card included, 16 gig uh, built into the device though. And of course the 1500 milliamp hour battery, it's good for over 6 hours of talk time. The Vibrant weighs about 120 and a half grams, uh, 4.2 ounces give or take. Uh, not too bad whatsoever. Uh, currently comes with Android 2.1. It's upgradable to 2.2. Uh, Samsung has not said when we're going to see a Froyo update, though. So that's the Samsung Vibrant for T-Mobile USA. It's a really nice Android 2.1 powered smartphone. Uh, fast processor, 
gorgeous display, and you might be surprised to hear me say this, but I really like TouchWiz 3.0. I think it adds a lot to the device. It's still it's a different thing than Sense. It's not as polished, maybe, but I really like what Samsung's been doing with the UI in general. Um, the device has good features, comes with Avatar preloaded, you've got Wi-Fi with DLNA support, uh, HSPA data, 7.2 megabits per second, um, really, really good quality device. $199.99 with contract on T-Mobile USA. And again, that's the Samsung Vibrant. I'm Michael Oral for MobileBurn.com.